Hi, I'm Matt Tolman, CEO of No Meat Athlete. Today we're talking about a topic near and dear to my heart. In fact, it's in my heart and all over our body, which is nutrients. And one of the most common things we hear about in terms of hurdles to people transitioning to a vegan diet or feeling like they can thrive on a fully plant-based diet relates to deficiency. And so we want to cover these nutrients of concern to ensure that you know exactly how to best complement a plant-based diet. And I use the word complement specifically because to us, it's not about supplementing your diet, as in supplemental amounts of the nutrients that you'll already get in abundance from whole fruits and vegetables and seeds and legumes and everything else that, that we include in the plant kingdom. But we're talking about complementing those nutrients just with those that are a little harder to find, maybe aren't existing in plants to begin with, uh, or are difficult to absorb for some reason. So without further ado, let's dive in and find out why B12 isn't the only nutrient that you might want to consider complementing your plant-based diet with. So first, let's set the stage and understand why you might want to consider supplementing with more than just B12. And there are a variety of factors unique to each one of these nutrients of concern. So let's start with what those nutrients are. B12, magnesium, selenium, omega-3 fatty acids called DHA and EPA, zinc and iodine are some of the ones we're going to touch on today. And like I said, each one of them has a different story. So by way of example, zinc or iodine, those are drawn from the soil. And as modern agricultural practices have really degraded the quality of our soil, the nutrients that we find within that, that fruit or vegetable grown in organic soil just doesn't have the same quality as it used to in you know, years past. So each one of these has a unique story and we're gonna cover each one by one. So let's start with B12, probably the one that's most known, most talked about, and, and that's because it is absolutely critical to your health. So first and foremost, if there's nothing else you take away from this video, it's make sure that you supplement with B12. It is absolutely critical to so many underlying functions in your body from managing neurological processes to making blood cells and DNA. I, I just can't say enough times that that is one thing you, you don't want to um, risk by eating dirty vegetables, which is um, a, a common myth that you can actually get all the B12 you need just by uh, eating unwashed vegetables. So. Um, let's unpack that a little bit. Uh, first and foremost, B12 does come from soil bacteria. So as I mentioned before, you know, as we erode the quality of our soil, we are finding less and less B12 even exists. And that's why many animals um, directly like, you know, ruminants, cows are actually given supplements to make sure that they have B12 and that that is passed along in the food product that non-vegans consume. It's just that there's not that much B12 left in our soil. But again, even if there was plenty of B12 in the soil, the idea that you're gonna get sufficient quantities on a regular basis by eating unwashed vegetables, um, it's just a risk that I don't think is, is worth taking considering that uh, B12 is a water-soluble vitamin, has very low risk of toxicity, and again, is so, so important to so many processes in your body that it's a, it's a good insurance policy just to make sure that you check off that box. So again, B12 is one of those that you just don't wanna risk. So how much B12 is necessary? Well, uh, we think about 2.4 micrograms is uh, a good dose per day. Um, and don't be concerned, most supplements will actually provide much more than that. Uh, as I said, it's water soluble, so you'll end up urinating that excess out. Uh, and they do that because absorbability in your body, um, you know, is questionable. And so it is so important that you get that nutrient um, in adequate amounts that uh, most supplement uh, manufacturers will actually put far more than that in a dose. Let's move on to vitamin D, the sunshine vitamin aptly named because your body actually synthesizes vitamin D in reaction to sun exposure. And so you'll actually reabsorb that vitamin from your skin over the course of hours after that sun exposure. 
Uh, that's not so much a plant versus animal vitamin. It, it's a function of not exposing our skin to outdoor lights. That's why we see such an epidemic in terms of low vitamin D status, uh, particularly in the U.S. and, and many um, northern countries. You may not be getting enough exposure to the sun. And again, not just your body, but your, uh, your exposed skin. That's really the important part. And that's why so many vegan doctors will recommend a supplementation uh, regime that includes vitamin D just because we see so many people being deficient uh, in our country. We recommend about 2000 IU uh, per day. That uh, is a recommendation shared by all of our favorite doctor, Dr. Greger. And uh, we think that's sufficient, but of course you can always get a blood test to see what your status is. And our other recommendation is to make sure to get vitamin D3. So there are different types of vitamin D uh, and vitamin D2 is a synthetic form. Vitamin D3 is more similar to what we generate in our own bodies. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure to find a vegan source. So oftentimes vitamin D3 is derived from an animal source. Um, if you find a, uh, a vegan source, it, it comes from uh, an organism called lichen, usually, uh, which is a cousin of the mushroom. Uh, so be sure to, uh, to get tested if, if you're worried about it. Uh, expose yourself to a safe amount of sun um, or consider a vitamin D supplementation. Let's get to one of my favorites, which are the omega-3 fatty acids, DHA and EPA. I'm not gonna attempt to actually describe the words uh, for what DHA and EPA stand for, um, but suffice it to say that these are some of the most overlooked uh, nutrients, uh, particularly important for vegans. So um, to begin, where do they come from? So uh, DHA and EPA actually come from algae. And so as you hear more and more people talking about the benefits of omega-3s, as well as the benefits of, say, fish oil. Um, those are one and the same, by and large, and they're really looking for the DHA and EPA content in the fish oil. For us vegans, we go straight to the source, which is the algae. In the case of fish oil, uh, the fish actually eat the algae, then deposit uh, the DHA and EPA in its flesh, and then we go and, unfortunately, harvest the fish for those oils. So again, getting a vegan form of DHA and EPA means you're going straight to the algae. DHA and EPA are incredibly important, particularly for little kids. DHA um, is really, really key to the formation of your brain. Uh, so pregnant women as well, uh, super important if you're on a fully plant-based diet that you consider DHA and EPA. And before moving on, uh, Couple of tips. Um, first of all, there, there's a common myth that you can get sufficient omega-3s uh, from, say, walnuts. Um, it is true that walnuts do provide an omega-3 called ALA, alpha-linoic acid, and there is a small portion of the population that can uh, translate ALA into DHA and EPA. You can get a genetic test to see if you're one of those people for me, it is so critical uh, that these, uh, you get these nutrients in abundance. In fact, there was a recent Framingham study that showed um, the, the difference between people who have adequate levels of omega-3s uh, circulating in their bloodstreams was so stark that I think all of us should be considering supplementation. And, and that's just not my opinion, but, but quite a few cardiologists and other doctors uh, who are coming out and saying we should be taking many, much more of this than we probably are. So um, relying on walnuts or some of these other uh, legumes for your omega-3s, is probably not a great uh, strategy. So let's quickly turn to a similar story, which is iodine. Uh, iodine can absolutely be found in plant sources, like I say, in, in many seaweeds, um, but it, it again is so important, particularly for the thyroid function that we really recommend uh, considering a supplement in that regard too. The, the uh, nutrient just doesn't come in abundance, particularly in a Western diet. Um, you can get it through iodized salt. It is so critical that our government decided to um, add fortification to uh, salt, but you're only going to find the ones that specifically say 
that it's iodized. There is iodine content. You can see it on the label. So be sure to check that out as well. So let's go to vitamin K and particularly vitamin K2. So again, this one causes a lot of confusion because vitamin K1 is abundant in dark leafy green. So you're probably getting plenty of that if you drink your, your green smoothie every day. Um, but there's another lesser known but becoming more and more popular nutrient called vitamin K2. And this one's really, really important in terms of the management of calcium. So K2 helps to pull uh, calcium away from your soft tissues like your heart and your brain and into hard tissues like your teeth or your bones, right? Things that you want calcium in and you don't generally want your, your heart to calcify, get hard and, and rigid. That's the, the start of atherosclerosis. So vitamin K2 is more and more being prescribed by uh, cardiologists and definitely something to talk to your doctor about. Now let's turn to zinc and you might be thinking, wait, beans have zinc and the truth is that a lot of plants offer zinc, but this one again has a complicated story because of a blocking agent called phytates. So zinc also, or I should say beans also come with phytates which block the absorption of zinc because What's critical to understand is that just because you eat something doesn't mean those nutrients make it into your bloodstream. There's all sorts of processes, including the, the gastric acid breaking things down and uh, your age and this and that, that really determine how much of a substance is getting into um, your circulatory system and, and actually able to help all the different parts of your body. And so again, zinc is not one that you want to fool around with. It stimulates the activity of more than a hundred enzymes. It's critical for normal growth, for gene regulation. I mean, you name it, zinc is essential. That's why they call them essential vitamins and minerals. Um, so unless you're you know, soaking and rinsing your beans and making sure to get all of your, those phytates off. Um, it's really smart to, to consider um, a supplement uh, or a complement to your plant-based diet. So let's wrap up with two more that you may want to consider. One is selenium, which um, we often hear folks say, well, you can get selenium from one Brazil nut per day. One Brazil nut will provide all the selenium you need on a daily basis, but I can only speak for myself. I don't always remember to eat my Brazil nut every day. Um, and selenium, again, is really important to protect against neurodegenerative disorders like Alzheimer's, for instance, uh, amongst a number of other um, disease prevention activities that, that are uh, being studied and, and often cited in terms of selenium and the deficiency that we see uh, in the population. So. Um, again, that's a reminder to eat your Brazil nut every day um, or uh, consider your supplementation. And last but not least, magnesium. So we often hear that magnesium is great to help with uh, sleep and that is absolutely true. Um, it is not found as prevalently in plants today. Uh, again, that's when we can blame soil depletion for. So again, we encourage folks to look closely as to whether they're getting enough magnesium and to consider a, a supplement on that one as well. So there you have it, the big nutrients of concern for vegans, the one that might not be in plants, the ones that uh, may be in plants but are difficult to absorb because of blocking agent like phytates, um, or the ones that uh, just might not be prevalent enough in adequate quantities to really feel uh, secure that you're getting them uh, in your plant-based diet. And I would be remiss not to mention that we actually took all of these hard to find, hard to absorb, or just not available in plant nutrients uh, and put them into one bottle called Complement. So it's the perfect complement to a plant-based diet. If you are concerned about any of these things or you think that you just want that peace of mind provided by uh, you know, taking uh, one complement per day, um, check out Compliment and uh, there are links to that below. Thanks so much for being here and we hope this is helpful.